Nick, 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 This is legit Dan Shire doing his rounds of shh. Yeah. I get to write all the scripts with some very talented writers, but I get to I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. There's a lot of good stuff that happens, but I work with an incredibly emotionally addictive producer. Dan Schneider. I know you're watching my Vine. Do you like my Vine? Vine. Vine. Look what you've done to me. For years, what children watched and consumed was at the hands of a few Hollywood executives. Disney Channel and Nickelodeon ruled children's TV and entertainment, creating media empires off of hit shows, movies, and music. He's the guy behind some of the greatest shows on Nickelodeon. His name is Dan Schneider. There was an immense amount of power and control given to the hands of a few people. I get to write all the scripts with some very talented writers, but I get to, I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. That has now been taken away with the rise of social media as children are choosing social media platforms like YouTube and TikTok over major television networks of the past. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon! But what really happened behind the scenes back when Nickelodeon and Disney Channel ruled network TV? Uh, a comfortable woman right there and the oh, oh no i need i need to get out of frame i need to get out of frame look at him put his arm around her like that oh my gosh and she's just like standing there with her hands down like please let go of me sir awkwardly touching her pockets no one will ever truly know the dark underbelly of the world of children's entertainment but the story of dan schneider nickelodeon's most successful producer reveals a lot about the truth of corruption and chaos behind the nickelodeon Nickelodeon Empire, and what really happens when one person can have too much power. I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. Hi friends and internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel. In today's video, we're discussing the controversies surrounding Nickelodeon's top producer who created some of the most successful shows in Nickelodeon history, Dan Schneider. There's a lot of this that happens. I, I work with incredibly emotionally producer like i mean even talking about it now my my face gets hot thinking of it but before we get into the dark world of dan schneider this video is sponsored by ritual for the past month i've been taking rituals essential for women supplement as well as their symbiotic supplement and these are my favorite supplements that i've ever taken you know when vitamins just taste kind of yucky or they have an awkward size and are kind of hard to swallow that's what she said <laughs> ritual has solved these problems problems, which has made me actually want to take my vitamins every day, which was a challenge for me in the past. And my favorite thing about Ritual Vitamins, which I didn't even know was something that I needed, is Ritual has a mint tab in every bottle, so the vitamins have this amazing fresh mint smell, which really makes the whole thing an enjoyable experience. Ritual is also gentle on the stomach with a delayed release capsule design, and they offer products to support the health of your whole family. The vitamin contains nine high quality nutrients from D3 to omega-3 that are difficult to get enough of every day, even with a healthy diet. So taking the essential for women's vitamin helps me feel like I'm helping nourish my body, even if I don't always have time to prepare a healthy meal. Ritual is also vegan friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and contains no added sugar. Better health doesn't happen overnight, and right now Ritual is offering 20% 
and off on your first month. Fill in the gaps in your diet with Essential for Women, a small step that helps support a healthy foundation. That's 20% off one month's worth of vitamins or protein by going to ritual.com slash capital CWHM20 and using my code capital CWHM20. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring this video and thank you so much to those who support my channel and click the link and try out Ritual. I really hope you enjoy the product as much as I have. And now let's discuss the dark story of Dan Schneider. And I don't feel comfortable going into details about what I see with Dan or like what Dan is. Not nice guy. I also want to provide a quick disclaimer. The story of Dan Schneider features a lot of anonymous accounts of things and speculation. I do not know the full story of Dan Schneider, what he's done, who he is, and I don't think anyone ever will. But I can share what's been posted publicly, what's known publicly, and leave it up to you as the viewer to draw your own conclusions. I also want to shout out the YouTuber Sloan. He's covered Dan Schneider for a long time on this platform and has brought to light a lot of issues regarding this topic. It's Dan Snyder putting these kids in really weird gross situations so that he can please his bosses and his own sick fantasies. So definitely check out his videos on this topic as well. So who is Dan Schneider? Dan, we love you. Thank you so much. It's hard to put in words what Dan has done for all of us. To put it simply, Dan Schneider is like the Wizard of Oz for Nickelodeon in the early 2000s. He was the powerful man behind the curtain, creating and dictating some of the most successful shows Nickelodeon has ever seen. I'm happy to be here to honor Dan. He's created so many amazing shows, and tonight we've got actors representing all of them right here. Stars from all that, The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, and I, Carly. I love making television so much. You know how much I love comedy and TV and, and making funny stuff. He wasn't known to the general public, but to those in the industry, he was seen as a powerful figure and a person with the ability to create very successful shows. And when Nickelodeon finally ended their contract with him, they paid him $7 million to leave the network, which just goes to show the massive amount of power that Dan carried with him. Daniel James Schneider Schneider was born on January 14, 1966, and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. Comedy had long been a tool for Dan, who grew up in Memphis, surrounded by what he described as a warm and funny family. After graduating from high school, Dan enrolled in his father's alma mater at Harvard University, but dropped out after one semester. He returned back to Memphis and began taking classes at the University of Memphis. While studying, Dan was approached by a movie producer who encouraged him to audition for a role. In Memphis, Tennessee, I feel like there's gotta be more to that story. Dan managed to land a small role in the teen comedy movie Making the Grade, which was released in 1984. He later relocated to Los Angeles, where he started a career in the entertainment industry. And from there, Dan quickly associated himself with the right people and began to climb the ladder of power in Hollywood. During the 1980s, Dan appeared in multiple films such as Better Off Dead, Hot Resort, Happy Together, Listen to Me, and The Big Picture. He was later cast in the 80s sitcom Head of the Class, along with Brian Robbins, who is now the president of Kids and Family Entertainment for Viacom CBS. Here are two of our co-hosts from the hit TV show Head of the Class. Say hello to Brian Robbins and Dan Schneider. <laughs> And Schneider became deeply involved with Viacom and Nickelodeon throughout his career. Viacom Incorporated, short for Video and Audio Communications, was the world's fourth largest media conglomerate. Viacom was the owner of MTV Networks, whose MTV Kids and Family Group included Nickelodeon, Nick at Night, Nick Tunes, Nick Jr., and Team Nick. As of December 2019, after its merger with CBS, it is now known as Viacom CBS. By the late 1980s, Schneider had been recruited to co-host the second ever Kids' Choice Awards alongside Robbins, and Schneider and Robbins ended up forming a partnership and working together on the Nickelodeon show All That, which was supposed to be an SNL-inspired kids show that featured a lot of different comedy sketches in each episode. Oh. 
beyond all that, Schneider did things a little bit differently than most producers would do. Instead of writing the pilot episode first and finding the cast later, Schneider decided to first find the talent and then write the episodes. A nationwide talent search for child and teen actors was launched that would last for several months. Eventually, Angelique Bates, Lori Beth Denberg, Katrina Johnson, Kel Mitchell, Elisa Reyes, Josh Server, and Kenan Thompson were hired. Even though the show was initially received poorly, all that ended up being a massive success for Nickelodeon. Angelique Bates left the show after season 3 and ended up being replaced with Amanda Bynes, who soon became a huge Nickelodeon star. I see you've all met our new cast member, Amanda. Isn't she all happy and perky? Come real close to the TV, Alex. Closer, closer, closer. Sarah, don't like you! Dan had actually scouted Amanda Bynes during a comedy camp at the Los Angeles Laugh Factory. Well, my dad saw like a an article that, you know, kids could do a comedy camp at the Laugh Factory. Right. And so it was really fun. And then there was like a graduation night and that's where the producers of the show, like Brian Robbins and Dan Schneider came on the show and they saw me there. So and that was it. it. You just got discovered right off of the comedy camp. Yeah. And the success of all that started a trend often seen with Dan Schneider's shows, where he would create several Nickelodeon spin-off series using actors he already knew on previously successful shows he already created. Creating a network of actors who are already used to to the Dan Schneider way and methodology. The second All That spin-off came in late 1999, when Dan Schneider created a show called The Amanda Show, a similar sketch-like comedy show all based around Amanda Bynes. Did I tell you it was your turn to speak, Mr. I can't keep my mouth shut! Uh, no. The Amanda Show also casted Josh Peck and Drake Bell, and quickly became one of the network's highest rated programs. And The Amanda Show really helped showcase Dan Schneider's potential as a showrunner in children's television. With its success and growing fan base, it seemed like the show could continue for years and years. However, The Amanda Show abruptly ended in 2002, only three years after its debut. In 2002, Dan had Jamie Lynn Spears audition for him at only 11 years old, after an executive at Nickelodeon asked if he would like to meet with Britney Spears sister. Jamie Spears. She's an only child. Uh, no. I have a brother, Brian. Oh, and you know, my sister. At the time, All That had just revamped its cast, and he knew that casting Britney's younger sister would bring a lot of attention to the series. Midway through season 9 of All That, Schneider had a meeting with another executive at the network. They wanted to know if Schneider had any ideas for a spin-off series that he could build around Jamie Lynn Spears. So Dan began developing a teen drama titled Zoe 101. According to Schneider, the show was completely custom made for Jamie Lynn. Lynn. Throughout four seasons and 61 episodes, Zoe 101 was one of Nickelodeon's highest rated and most successful shows in the 2000s. The series won three Young Artist Awards, two Kids' Choice Awards, and a Neo Fan Award. <laughs> Alongside producing Zoe 101, Schneider became focused on releasing another Nickelodeon show, a teen sitcom called Drake and Josh. The series starred Drake Bell as Drake Parker and Josh Peck as Josh Nichols. Both Drake and Josh worked well together on The Amanda Show, so producers were able to see their chemistry and how they worked with one another, as well as what their strengths and weaknesses were. So go get the power saw! Okay, I will. <laughs> and this, to Dan's credit, if he even really deserves it, I think was one of the smartest things that he did. By creating shows around actors of his previously successful shows, he was able to know what the stars would be good at, how they worked together, and the stars were used to already working with him. So Drake and Josh was another massive success. The series ran from January 11th, 2004 to September 16th, 2007, totaling 57 episodes in 
four seasons. And all of a sudden, Dan Schneider was in a league of his own, having worked on four massively successful TV shows. So how did Dan do it? It's hard to say exactly what was the main reason for all of these shows' success, but as I mentioned earlier, one thing Dan did was focus on finding the talent first and creating a show around them. Allegedly, Schneider and other producers hosted camps to recruit talent. At these camps, parents would drop their kids off unsupervised with these adult male producers. The camps included basic acting classes along with other events used to help child stars be discovered. So what would happen is that your parents would send you to sort of like this camp. It was basic acting classes and it was an opportunity for the kids to get discovered. There are a lot of rumors about these camps, that producers would watch children play in the pool, that inappropriate things would happen at these camps. It's even alleged that Megan Fox and Hilary Duff attended these camps, but it's hard to say what's true or just gossip. Interestingly enough, most of the kids got discovered by the pool. It was like Megan Fox and um, other female cele- and Hillary Duff was another one and they would push you to set- do pool activities because they said that's where you-, you have the highest chance of getting discovered. So you could say, I guess, in the beginning that Dan Schneider was very similar to a lot of other successful people in the US. He developed a system that he was able to replicate in scale that had enough of a differentiator that it was able to produce more successful children's TV shows than other people people at the time. The guy behind some of the greatest shows on Nickelodeon. His name is Dan Schneider. But like most stories of successful people in the US, you have to continue innovating or you will fail to keep up and eventually fail completely. One innovation or a few successes isn't enough. And to maintain your place at the top, you have to always keep pushing for more and more. So for Dan, this was only the beginning. And Schneider had another series on the way that would solidify his life legacy in children's television, and that was I, Carly. Miranda Cosgrove was cast for the lead role of Carly Shea. Jeanette McCurdy, Nathan Kress, and Jerry Trainer were also cast. I, Carly initially aired on Nickelodeon from September 8, 2007 to November 23, 2012, over the span of six seasons and 97 episodes. The most watched episode is I Saved Your Life, which aired on January 18, 2010 to 11 0.2 million viewers, which is also the second most viewed telecast in Nickelodeon history. Victorious was another Dan Schneider creation and is the fifth series he produced for Nickelodeon. Schneider first met actress Victoria Justice in 2005, when she was only 12, and auditioned for the part of Lola Martinez on Zoe 101. Impressed by her energy and look, apparently, because you can be impressed with a 12-year-old's energy and look, Schneider hired Victoria Victoria Justice, and after working with her on three episodes, called Nickelodeon to say, I've got your next star. Around this same time, Disney Channel, Nickelodeon's main competitor, was experiencing immense success with franchises like Hannah Montana and High School Musical, because these shows generated revenue through both music and television, which gives shows basically an opportunity to double their revenue through being able to sell and stream music produced by the stars of the show. So Nickelodeon executives asked Schneider to create a music-based show for the channel, and thus the show Victorious was born. Victorious ended abruptly with not much explanation, and in the same month, Nickelodeon announced that Dan Schneider would be making a spin-off of both iCarly and Victorious called Sam and Cat, and ordered the pilot episode. Starred Jeanette McCurdy as Sam Puckett from iCarly, and Ariana Grande as Cat Valentine from Victorious. The series aired from June 8th of 2013 to July 17, 2014. Rumors circulated that McCurdy and Grande were having issues with the network over their salaries. Three months later, on July 13th of 2014, Nickelodeon announced that the series had been cancelled, having only produced 36 episodes of the 40-episode order. But Schneider had already started to pitch a comedy television series called Henry Danger to Nickelodeon. In March 2014, the series was picked up with an initial production order of 20 episodes, later expanding to 26 
episodes. Even though Henry Danger became one of the longest running television series on Nickelodeon, it was becoming apparent that Schneider's series were seeing significantly less success commercially than their earlier counterparts. While Drake and Josh averaged 3 million viewers between seasons 2 and 3 in 2006, Henry Danger's highest average viewers came during the first season at 1.64 million and only decreased steadily over time. Schneider, who routinely produced two separate series simultaneously, also ordered another series called Game Shakers in early 2015. The series aired on Nickelodeon from September 12, 2015 to June 8th of 2019. After three seasons and 61 total episodes, Nickelodeon abruptly canceled Game Shakers and cut ties with Dan Schneider shortly after that. Not much is known of what caused this abrupt end in Dan's time with Nickelodeon, which has led a lot of people to speculate on the reasons. And since then, employees have come forward anonymously and spoken about their experiences with Dan Schneider. It seems that when Dan was working with Nickelodeon, a lot of concerning rumors began to circulate, leading Viacom to do an investigation into Dan Schneider. This investigation happened right before Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon parted ways, which has led to a lot more speculations and rumors as to what the investigation uncovered. Viacom CBS interviewed dozens of employees. According to four people with knowledge of the review, they were not authorized to discuss it, but some former colleagues in recent interviews said they found Dan Schneider to be a controlling, difficult showrunner who was prone to tantrums and angry emails, a man with a delicate ego who made some staff members feel like they were always walking on eggshells. Some people even reported he made them feel uncomfortable. Allegedly, he would frequently ask an employee from the costume department for shoulder and neck massages and would text child actors outside of work hours. But Schneider said he never acted inappropriately with people he worked with. I couldn't and I wouldn't have the long-term friendships and continued loyalty from so many reputable people if I'd mistreated my actors of any age, especially minors, he said. And he said that if people perceived him as difficult, it was only because he had high standards. I'm very willing to defend creative things that I believe in, he said. At the time, Schneider was not the first writer Nickelodeon had parted ways with. In October of 2017, the network told People in a statement that the Loud House creator Chris Savino was no longer working with them following numerous allegations of harassment. We take allegations of misconduct very seriously, and we are committed to fostering a safe and professional workplace environment that is free of harassment or other kinds of inappropriate conduct, a spokesperson for the network said in a statement at the time. Since Dan Schneider's fall from grace, more and more interviews with co-workers, friends, and television executives paint a fuller picture of who Dan Schneider was behind the scenes. And these interviews uncovered that even though Dan Schneider had a talent for creating successful children's shows, he was incredibly difficult to work with behind the scenes. During their investigation, Viacom CBS had found that, alongside the many co-workers who praised his attention to detail, and work ethic, many people Dan worked with viewed him as verbally abusive. In Dan's first major interview since his split with Nickelodeon, he declined to comment on the investigation and claimed that the reason for his departure was so he could take a break. I took a break to take care of a lot of stuff that I'd let go by the wayside for decades, Schneider said, noting that he lost more than 100 pounds during his time off. Whatever I do next, I want it to outdo what I've done in in the past. Even though Viacom, Nickelodeon, and Dan Schneider all claimed that Dan did nothing inappropriate, especially with his child actors, at this time video compilations began to leak on the internet. These videos stitched together scenes from Schneider's shows, tongue twister, <laughs> videos he had taken on set, and pictures of him with child actors to raise questions about his behavior with the young people he worked with. And these videos and shows are very concerning. Knowing that the kids he's posing with and filming are underage and seeing his comfortableness with being so close with them definitely raises a red flag to many people. That was one of the better things I've ever heard. Hey! 
Hi, what's going on here? Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? Let me tell you all this. Group. I'll tell you that. No, stop, stop. Is everybody here today or no? No, 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 On top of that, some people who worked on Schneider's shows came forward anonymously to say that they viewed his chumminess with his young actors as awkward and odd for a powerful, middle-aged showrunner. Several recalled that he often spent time in the middle of a workday interacting with young fans online, and after work texting child actors about silly matters of teenage internet life. Former crew members recalled that Justice's character had a locker on the set of Victorious decorated with photos of young men alongside the words do delicious and who's hot. One of the photos was a headshot of a young Dan Schneider. Dan said the photo was likely added from someone in the art department, which I could see that being a sort of funny inside joke from the people on set, but if it was Dan Schneider that put the photo there, then that would definitely be a little bit weird. Dan Schneider also said that texting was often the preferred mode of communication for his young actors. I never interacted with actors in any way, texting or otherwise, that should make anyone uncomfortable, he said. I don't know, maybe it's just me here, but I don't really see a reason for a grown man to be texting children. I mean, they're underage, text their parents. Why do you need to talk to them directly anyways? Maybe that's just me. Being a mother, if I knew someone, an adult, middle-aged man, was texting back and forth with my child at night, hell no. When I see things as a mom now, like now that I'm a mom, you get like a different eye. I remember really seeing it for the first time and just being like, oh yeah. Yeah, like yeah. this adds up. Like, yeah, makes yeah sense. Like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Like, oh, and there, there's no way of defending yourself. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you can't do it because it's too, on the nose, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Besides the allegations made from anonymous sources, Amanda Bynes herself has hinted at Schneider's potentially dark past. In 2018, after Nickelodeon parted ways with Schneider, Amanda reached out to her associate, NT Lawyer, and asked him to post something on his website. One section read, I don't know how any of these men sleep at night, but if there's one thing I do know, it's what's done in the dark always comes to light. The odd capitalization spelled out Dan did it. Later, she goes on to say, after the second incident, I don't know if I'll ever be able to have children or have the family of my dreams. It it definitely seems that something happened between Schneider and Bynes, and the situation surrounding Amanda Bynes is sad. I definitely feel like there's more to this story none of us know, and the history of Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider makes me really question what Amanda has experienced and went through during her time on Nickelodeon. Miranda Cosgrove has stayed completely silent surrounding the conversation regarding her former boss. Instead of speaking out publicly or deciding to weigh in on the conversation via social social media, Cosgrove took action in a small but telling way. Both of iCarly's lead actresses did not appear at the Teen Choice Awards in 2014, where Dan Schneider was the recipient of the Ceremony's Lifetime Achievement Award. He's created so many amazing shows, and tonight we've got actors representing all of them right here. Stars from all that, The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, and I Dan, we love you. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> so, it is our great honor to present the first ever Nickelodeon Lifetime Achievement Award to a man who has been making all of us laugh for the past two decades. Put your hands together for the one and only Dan Schneider! Oh my gosh. Oh! Alright. Woo! Try not to cry. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. 
for this. The outline described Cosgrove and McCurdy's absence as a boycott. Jeanette McCurdy has been much more apparent in her distaste for Schneider. In response to why she skipped Schneider's Lifetime Achievement Award presentation, McCurdy went on Twitter and wrote, A lot of you guys are asking why I didn't attend the KCAs. I wish I could explain everything as thoroughly as I would like to, but unfortunately, a simpler explanation is all I can write. I was put in an uncomfortable, compromising, and unfair situation. Many of you have guessed what it is, and I had to look out for me, she continued. I chose not to go because sticking up for what is right and what is fair is what my mom taught me is always the most important thing. I want to thank those of you who have reached out with kind words of support, McCurdians and Arianators alike. No matter who or what you support, I believe in supporting fairness first. If you have done that, thank you. Jeanette McCurdy was also one of the most vocal about her horrible experiences during her time on Nickelodeon. I mean, I, d I don't think young people should be allowed to be famous. Like, right. if there's somebody who could come in and say, no, they can't, this is, they're not mentally capable of handling this, I think that should happen. Um, because I, it just, you know, the thing with former child stars having breakdowns makes so much sense to me because I think the world that you're thr thrust into kind of, like, puts you right in line to have a breakdown. McCurdy has said that she was embarrassed by her past roles and that it resulted in her leaving acting. It's the thing that I feel the most shame of in my entire life. I, I do not like any of the, the acting work that I have ever, like any of the projects that I've been a part of as an actor. At the same time, she was also dealing with workplace stress and pressure from her mother at an early age. McCurdy also posted some concerning vines talking about the industry. Hey Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my vine. Do you like my vine? Vine. 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 Look what you've done to me. And in December of 2020, YouTuber Michaela Peterson uploaded an interview with McCurdy. In the interview, she explained how she worked with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer, and that talking about it present day still made her uncomfortable. There's a lot of abuse that happens. I, I work with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer. Um, like, I mean, even talking about it now, my, my face gets hot thinking of it just Ooh. because... You know, he'd say things like, "You guys won't. You, you guys will work. You would work at Yogurt Land if you didn't work for me." And he would just scream. How old were you? I was. Uh, when I started the show, I was thirteen. Do, um, does Yogurt Land even hire people when they're thirteen? <laughs> Jeanette McCurdy has recently published a memoir titled I'm Glad My Mom Died, where she discussed the traumatic things she experienced as a child actor. In the memoir, Jeanette describes the allegedly inappropriate experiences she had on set with an ominous figure who she called the creator. And as we know, Dan Schneider created and produced both Nickelodeon shows that Jeanette starred in. In a portion of the memoir published by Vanity Fair, McCurdy describes the creator's alleged allegedly inappropriate behavior, including massaging her at work, photographing her in a bikini, and pressuring her to drink while underage. McCurdy also alleges that she turned down a $300,000 offer from Nickelodeon that would have prevented her from speaking about her experiences with the network. It seems that all this information on Dan Schneider is really just the beginning of the full truth being uncovered, and it seems that many people are scared to speak out since Nickelodeon Nickelodeon has seemingly a vested interest in keeping everyone quiet so that the Nickelodeon brand isn't damaged. But not everyone seemed to have this kind of experience with Schneider. Actor Noah Monk, who played Gibby on iCarly, worked long hours beside McCurdy and Schneider and told a different story. If that shit went on, I'm like, that's that's devastating to me because I don't see him in that light, you know? It might be baseless rumor, but I don't want to speak. Like, what if some shit comes out? I don't want to be like on record being like, no, no. Oh, no, you know, so I have no clue. But the controversies and wrongdoings go even deeper. Schneider is known throughout Hollywood for being a bit weird. There are some strange behind the scenes videos of Schneider with his young actors. Even one behind the scene video of him in a hot tub with Amanda Bynes. There was even a widespread rumor that he had impregnated Jamie Lynn Spears when she was underage. Perhaps the most absurd allegation towards Dan Schneider is that he is the true father of Jamie Lynn Spears' daughter. 
These allegations against Schneider can be found all the way back to the start of his time working with Nickelodeon. In 2022, Taisha Hampton, ex-wife of Nickelodeon star Kel Mitchell, spoke out on suspicious behavior that she allegedly witnessed on the set of Nickelodeon's All That. All right, so let me ask you a question. So have you ever heard about all the crazy sick that went on at Nickelodeon? Have I heard about it? You know, like with the pedophilia and all that, all that shit. Have I heard about it? Yeah, I know about it. According to Hampton, who is married to Mitchell from 1999 to 2005, Nickelodeon opted to film shows in Orlando, Florida due to the lack of child labor laws. The reason why the, 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 the TV shows and Nickelodeon shows were filmed in Florida was because Florida had no child labor laws. No established child labor laws meant that producers could do whatever they wanted, including overworking their child actors. Hampton also alleged disturbingly that many producers would talk about and show their child actors very inappropriate things. People on the set would show like photos and they give us yeah, Those were kids, like young kids on that set. Yeah. Hampton and Mitchell reportedly entered clubs using fake IDs provided by people on the Nickelodeon set. Because we would get into clubs and we were young, like 16, 17 years old, we'd, we'd be in clubs. And the people on the set in Florida made us fake IDs. According to Hampton, there were zero boundaries on set, and she would often lock herself in Mitchell's dressing room to avoid being harassed by the producers. Even when I was pregnant, they would say stuff like, can I just put your in my mouth? Can I just hold him there? I mean, it was just... I had to stay inside of Kel's dressing room for most of the time because I was being sexually harassed. Hampton alleged that the producers really knew how to pick them, alluding to the producers selecting child stars with absent or negligent parents. And these parents, like Kel's parents, were not with him. All these parents of the kids on the show, their parents were not with him. Since the children had to work on set for long hours, parents couldn't be on set all the time because they had work or other commitments. This meant child stars were often alone with producers who dangled their careers right in front of them and had all the power to make or break them. On top of that, parents who were active and attentive were considered distractions, meaning the more active a parent was, the less likely the child was to be cast. This narrative was supported by Tracy Brown, whose son Brian Hearn was cast on All That from season 7 to 8. Brown spoke out on a YouTube stream in 2021, stating that she wanted to sue Nickelodeon because of the trauma and money they cost her. Dan Schneider did not like me. And God is good, because there were many times on that set where they're like, hey, we want to invite Brian to a party. And I'm like, hey, just Brian? And they go, yes. And I'm like, no. And they don't like moms that take control of their child, but I have heard things. So guess what? You don't need to like me. And they were like, well, bye-bye. And I was like, let's go. Like, why was it not okay for me to allow, like, <clears throat> some sense of parental discipline? Like, why mm -hmm. were you so interested in taking that away from me? Because if they had taken you out of the picture, then we can have him and we can do whatever we want to with him. Thank and you. we can have him Thank you. do whatever we want him to do with others. Yeah, yeah? I'm even thinking about suing Nickelodeon. Seriously. I mean, yeah. No, I don't like, see why you wouldn't dare you I not let me be a mother. Like, how dare you? According to Brown, Brian was allegedly fired from all that for not complying with the child separation environment they were trying to create on set. Essentially, the producers wanted to separate Brian from his mother and fired Brian when his mother would not comply, which is disgusting. A similar instance occurred with Angelique Bates, who worked with Nickelodeon on the series All That from 1992 to 1996, and since working with Dan Schneider, she's broken her silence. From 1992 to 1996, I was a series regular on Nickelodeon's All That. I was only 12 years old, and that's when my nightmare began. I was physically, mentally, emotionally in front of the producers and cast members, and sometimes they could even hear me yelling. But nothing was done to help me, until approximately 1996 when CPS was called. And... When CPS came, I was pressured by all the adults that were set to protect me to stay silent. I did, and I have, but I can no longer stay silent, and I won't. My name is Angelique Bates, and I am an adult survivor of child abuse.
And this is my story. And over the years, Angelique has done several interviews and talked about her tragic experience working at Nickelodeon. She reiterated that they wanted a separation of child and parent on set, and Angelique's mother refused to conform because it was against the law. Though Angelique clarified that Schneider never touched her, but did verbally abuse her on set. Giving so much power over children to one person seems very, very very dangerous, and to systematically try to separate the child from the parent seems like a recipe for disaster, and a no-brainer that that would so easily lead to a and it's just so sad that this seemed to go on for literally decades. While the testimonies by Hampton, Brown, and Bates could be labeled allegations, a known associate of Schneider's, Brian Peck, was convicted as a child offender in 2004 after he used his movie industry role to a Nickelodeon star. Peck, who worked as a dialogue coach, was allegedly one of the people who helped Schneider recruit child stars at his camps. In a 2002 article titled, Room to be all that, it is revealed that Dan Schneider and Brian Peck would host comedy boot camps for Nickelodeon child stars, where they were allegedly separated from their parents. He was arrested in August 2003 for acts with a child. The acts with the minor occurred in 2001 at Peck's residence while he was coaching the victim. The investigation into Peck began when the minor's family reported that Peck had molested the child for over six months. He was sentenced to 16 months in jail, but after completing his sentence, returned to Hollywood and resumed his work as an actor and dialogue coach. Drake and Josh was another one of Dan Schneider's Nickelodeon sitcom hits, starring Drake Bell and Josh Peck. The Nickelodeon alum, Drake Bell, first ran into trouble in 2015 with a DUI charge. Then in 2021, a real scandal hit the star when he was first accused of predatory behavior towards a minor. A 19-year-old woman who remained anonymous in the trial accused him of grooming her since she was 12 and sending her graphic photos and engaging in sexual misconduct in two separate incidents when she was still underage, NBC News reported. Bell pleaded guilty to felony attempted child endangerment and a misdemeanor charge of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles. He received a sentence of two years probation. Marty Weiss made a name for himself in the 80s Hollywood as a talent manager who primarily worked with child actors. His clients would land parts in the projects on TV channels like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. Good Luck Charlie, iCarly, Jack and Jill, and The Muppets were among several TV shows that have employed Mart Weiss's clients. In 2012, Weiss faced multiple charges of child's after Evan Henze claimed that he had been sexually assaulted by Weiss when he was 11. His parents hired Weiss to help guide their son, and Henze said the abuse began almost immediately. Weiss ultimately took a plea deal and pleaded no contest to two counts of oral corruption with a child under the age of 14. He was sentenced to one year and five months. However, he only served six months of his sentence before he got out of jail for good behavior. It's also important to mention Jason M. Handy, another Schneider associate who worked on all that and The Amanda Show as a production assistant. In 2004, Handy was sentenced to six years in prison after pleading no contest to two felony counts, one of acts on a child and one of distributing explicit material by email into a misdemeanor charge related to child's exploitation. In California, he was not only a production assistant at Nickelodeon, but volunteered at a Malibu church. The case, in part, prompted Nickelodeon to toughen its background checks for all employees, which why didn't they do that in the first place? Once again, the culture of Nickelodeon seemed to have normalized predators being a part of its production. And it's extremely concerning to me how many people of the past have been associated with child predation. Like, extremely concerning. Is it that the industry drew in these concerning types of people? Or is it that Nickelodeon just didn't have enough safeguards in place to ensure the safety of children on set? How does this happen, honestly? Even if Dan wasn't a part of this kind 
kind of culture, which is hard for me to believe at this point. So many of his associates were that he must have been complacent to all of it. And my heart just hurts for all of the child stars who've been harmed by this culture. One of the more prominent and most disturbing rumors of Dan Schneider is that he has a foot fish and that he uses his underage child actors to feed his desires under the guise of comedy. And it may seem ridiculous and far-fetched until you see all the scenes across all of his shows that have weird undertones and that involve feet. And when you look back on all these scenes, it just leaves you with this odd feeling, this queasy sort of feeling, knowing that Putting children, literal children, in these situations is just not acceptable, especially capitalizing off of putting children in more vulnerable situations. Even if Schneider himself didn't have a foot fetish, being an adult showrunner and producer for Nickelodeon means he had a responsibility to not put his child actors in situations where others could view them in a manner. Schneider said he was well aware of the postings, drawing awareness to the odd amount of feet in his shows, which he described as ridiculous. He said it was sad that social media companies can freely push forward any lie. Kids find feet goofy and funny, he said, and there was no effort to sexualize his young stars. The comedy, he said, was totally innocent. Even if it was innocent to Dan Schneider, once again, I feel it is his responsibility to ensure that the situations he's putting these child actors in could not result in them being to any sort of creepy viewer because there are a lot of creepy people in this world. Now, as you can see, Sheen is attaching magnetic cuffs to our wrist and the wires from the cuffs oh my device called puts one foot into a bucket of vinegar. Mm. Why, why is it have to, yes. why the foot? And I will put my foot into a bucket of goat's milk. This gets so weird, guys. And like, now, watch what happens when we touch our tongues to each end of this crystal rod. Over time, viewers have reflected back on the seemingly innocent videos and saw the strange undertones they had. For instance, when 16-year-old Ariana Grande lies in bed wearing a low-cut top and douses herself with water. Or the time when she questions whether the viewer has ever tried to put their big toe in their mouth before attempting it herself. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out! And the time when she was seen trying to, what it looked like suggestively, play with a potato, shaking it up and down with two hands, squealing, give up the juice. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. There's also a scene where Tori Vega pours ketchup all over her feet. And it's hard to believe when looking through these moments that Schneider's TV shows were made for kids. Schneider even has a YouTube channel named Dan Rapp, where he occasionally uploads behind the scenes footage from several of his TV shows over the years. Through these videos, fans have found multiple instances of Schneider making his underage child stars feel uncomfortable on set. It's like he starts heading towards her, she sees him coming and she walks away. Look at her backing up and then he grabs her pushes her towards the front she's obviously like awkwardly smiling like that is not um, a, a comfortable woman right there and the, oh, oh no I need I need to get out of frame I need to get out of frame look at him put his arm around her like that oh my gosh and she's just like standing there with her hands down like please let go of me sir awkwardly touching her pockets and wow. But it seems that no other executives or top guys on Nickelodeon 
noticed or cared about these weird undertones until the public started taking notice of this and calling it out. And then Dan's time on Nickelodeon came to an end. I think personally, once Nickelodeon saw that he was getting backlash and called out and wanted to cover their own butts. So Dan's time on Nickelodeon ended with him walking away with $7 million after all of that and his child stars walking away traumatized. Even if Dan never did all the things people have alleged he's done over the years, we know that his conduct was still intense, inappropriate at times, and verbally abusive, according to multiple accounts. And for such young children to be in that environment is extremely sad, but it seems Nickelodeon turned a blind eye, either out of ignorance or out of complacency, because Dan was bringing so much success, money, and attention to the Nickelodeon brand, and once he left, the brand virtually collapsed. Since Schneider's exit, Nickelodeon has been struggling to keep up with modern children's media. The children's network has lost nearly 60% of its audience since 2010, according to Nielsen Ratings data. And in Viacom's recently ended fiscal year, Nickelodeon's viewership among its core audience of children's ages 2 to 11 slumped 28% compared to fiscal 2018, according to Bernstein & Co. The name of the game nowadays is constant new content, which we can see in the rise of YouTube and TikTok and is something that Nickelodeon has been lacking in. Children nowadays prefer to form parasocial relationships with their favorite influencer instead of their favorite child actor like in the past. And Dan himself has been saying he's ended his time working on children's TV and instead is working on a new project for an adult audience. So the fate of Nickelodeon seems to be unknown and I wonder if they'll ever be able to recover their brand or if it'll collapse into a media brand of the past like their former parent company MTV. The last question I have after this bizarre story with so many twists and turns is who is responsible for all of these mishaps? The general public has seemed to conclude that there's a lot of things that are off and outright suspicious about Dan Schneider, but a lot of these problems also extend beyond what Dan did or is even capable of fixing and controlling into a general culture of mistreating child actors and entertainment employees. So is Nickelodeon themselves to blame for all of this? Well, honestly, I don't think they're blameless. And frankly, no wonder the talent of today is opting for social media fame and stardom over a working environment where their entire careers are placed in the hands of adults in a culture that tends to be abused. The amount of red flags with Nickelodeon throughout the years is extremely alarming. And though we may never know the full story of what went on there, what we do know happened should never have been acceptable. So that's all for this story. I'm sorry if it was left on a depressing note. I hope everyone's doing okay and that this video wasn't too mentally draining on you. I do think it's a really important message to spread and share and bring awareness to. I couldn't even believe believe I didn't know about some of this stuff before doing this video. If you liked this video and you want me to do more videos on the entertainment industry, then definitely comment what you think I should cover next. And once again, thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. Click my link below and use the code CWHM20, that's all capitals CWHM20, for 20% off your first month. And I'll see you in the next video. Hope you're doing well. Until then, bye! Thank you.